Today in the news, Intel finally does something useful and AMD's GPUs are a lot different than we thought. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. So the company has been on a marketing spree for quite some time now when it comes to their uh, GPUs. Heck, I think a couple of days ago, they released a really long blog post about how and why the ARC division of the company came about. At some point, they even started to describe the GPUs physically, which no one cares, Intel. The only relevant info about that blog post was their promise to have a global launch later this year. Anyways, all this to say that the blog post was pretty much useless. To Intel's credit though, a couple of days later, they followed this up with a mega benchmark release. You know, something that's uh, actually helpful to know about a GPU. The performance benchmarks are for the Alchemist A750 and they're comparing it to an RTX 3060. So let's take a look. In total, 42 games were tested on DX12 and there were six that were tested using the Vulkan API. According to Intel, these games were not cherry picked. They chose the games that were quote, interesting, saying that some of them are games used in GPU reviews and others are just popular Steam games. As you can see in the uh, normalized results, at 1080p Ultra, both GPUs kinda trade blows, at least in those 42 games shown here. If we step up to 1440p, but with high settings, not Ultra, it looks like the A750 does come out on top. And if we look at the Vulkan results, the results are pretty similar. Overall though, the A750 is about three to 5% faster than the RTX 3060. Still though, the results are definitely rough for Intel. The RTX 3060 is now a year and a half old, and if we compare the TDPs, the A750 will consume almost 20% more power at 200 watts for only a three to 5% gain in terms of performance. And that's in the tier one optimized games. Ouch. Now, of course, it all comes down to the price. The RTX 3060 was released with an MSRP of 329 US dollars. But considering Nvidia is trying to dump as many GPUs as possible, I wouldn't be surprised if they do what they did back with the 2060. That GPU got a pretty significant price drop late during its lifetime from 349 US to 299. On the Intel side, we still don't know the prices yet, but if the A750 is anything above, I'm gonna say 249, maybe 279, well, it might just be DOA. I mean, they did say that they were going to kill everyone in price to performance. So yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and find out later this year. I know that the next generation of mid-tier GPUs is coming next year, but we don't know exactly when. And I'd say Intel probably has maybe seven months in front of them to release the cards and sell as many as they can. So what do you think would be a fair price at this point for an A750, knowing its performance in DX12 and that it's probably gonna suck in DX9, uh, 10, and 11? Let me know down below. Moving on, let's talk AMD GPUs. It's been a while since we talked about the next generation and about a day ago, Angstronomics leaked a ton of details on them. So let's take a look. Starting at the top, we got Navi 31, AKA the RX 78 and 7900 series. It has uh, 48 work groups for a total of 12,288 stream processors. The setup stays the same with one graphics chiplet and six memory complex dies around it. What did change a lot is the Infinity Cache. The older rumors were talking about a massive amount, something like 256 megabytes or even up to 384. Now though, Angstronomics says that it's a lot lower at 96 megabytes. So we're talking about six chiplets with 16 megabytes each. Apparently, AMD did try to double that amount by stacking cache chiplets, but the return on performance was not enough to do that. It's still crazy that we're getting a lower amount after AMD made such a big deal about the infinity cache on the RX 6000 series. Apparently, Navi 31 would also have a cut down version, so likely the 7800 series, with 42 word groups instead of 48, and 80 megabytes of infinity cache. There's also changes with the Navi 32 family, that's the RX 7700 series. It would have slightly more stream processors than we thought, with 30 work groups and 7680 SPs. This one has four cache dies for a total of 64 megabytes of infinity cache. And lastly, there's Navi 33, codename Hot Pink Bonefish. 
It's still monolithic and it would have 16 work groups for 4,096 stream processors, lower than what we previously thought. The 32 megabytes of Infinity Cache would of course be built into the silicon since it's not a chiplet design. Apparently, this chip will be heavily pushed towards mobile rather than the desktop market. So there you have it, all of the updates for the third generation of Navi chips. Now we just have to wait until it releases to see the new layout in action. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to divide by zero. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.